Hello and welcome back. In today's video I'm working on a 2018 Ford Fusion with the 1.5 EcoBoost. It came in with the check engine light on, cam crank correlation codes, and a heavy oil leak out of the front of the engine. Now this vehicle's already been in at our dealership. Another tech has worked on it and did the short block recall and evidently sent it out to the customer this way. He's got the front oil seal lip pinched in about the 10 o'clock position. The oil pump is right behind the seal, so if you pinch the seal, they'll leak profusely. So I'm gonna put a new seal in it and also set up the valve timing. I've had quite a few questions on these, on setting these up, and it seemed like three of these messed up. They can be a little tricky to do, so I'm gonna show you how I set them up. I do it a little bit differently than the workshop manual. So I'm cleaning up the front here, the front seal. I'm gonna pull the seal out. Using a seal puller, I think this is a Matco. Works pretty slick. You can see the sp spring clamp on it is riding right on the crankshaft snout. It's messed up pretty bad. There's oil everywhere underneath this car. Here's the new seal number. I like to apply some seal glide to them before I put them in. When I put these in, I like to angle them in. I usually start on the bottom, get it, get it started, then use my pocket screwdriver, kind of work that inner lip in around the crankshaft while gently pressing in on the seal. And then using a seal installer to bottom it out. That way it presses it in nice and straight. There's my camshaft setup tool. I picked up this up off of eBay, I think, for a hundred bucks. And the first thing you want to install is a crankshaft locking tool 303-748. You pull the plug out of the back of the block. And it's right in front of the right half shaft, so you gotta pull that back a little bit. Go ahead and tighten that up. And next, I'm going to insert the, what are they calling this, the camshaft alignment tool 303-1552. I like to rock these camshafts until I find that sweet spot right in the middle so this tool slides out easily so it's not bound. Now 
and you'll be able to see here when I go to install this tool that the intake camshafts off about 15 degrees I can't slide this tool in so he's got the camshaft out on the the intake camshaft out that tool is the VCT locking tool 303 1097 and there's an arrow on it that shows it going up so I'm going to go ahead and remove these camshaft bolts these are VCT bolts and we're going to put new bolts in it and line this thing up I'm using an end wrench to make sure I don't put any stress on that camshaft alignment tool. They do not want you to have that tool in there when you loosen these up or tighten them up. I go ahead and leave it in there. I just make sure I'm holding it good, make sure there's no stress put on it. Kind of walking it right in the center. And there I'm taking it out. Or loosening the bolt up, I should say. These bolts are uh, torque to yield, so you got to stretch them. So they're a one time use bolt. Same thing with the crankshaft bolt. And there's the bolt numbers. And these VCT sprockets are. VCT units are not splined to the camshaft, so they just freely moved. So it's just a it's just a smash fit. You just tighten them up to their spec, and that's it. There's no alignment dowels on these. Now I'm going to install the uh, what tool was that again? The 303-1097 VCT locking tool and I still have the camshaft alignment tool in the back of the cams I'm going to leave these tools on there I'm going to go ahead and install the timing belt which you have to install slip on the crankshaft sprocket too the crankshaft sprocket it also doesn't have a keyway, it's not splined, so it can just move freely. Just a sandwich fit, all these. I'm releasing the tension. Now the belt is tight. And both my cam tools are in. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these VCT bolts. The camshaft bolts, you start off with 18 foot-pounds while holding the, the uh, camshafts. You don't want any pressure on that back alignment tool. And the next step is to go 75 degrees. So we're going to stretch these bolts. I just use a paint pen and I mark them at the 12 o'clock position. And then I mark, I just eyeball about where 75 de degrees would be on those VCT units. And I'm just eyeballing them here. They don't have to be perfect. And I'm making sure I'm really holding, applying the same amount of pressure in the opposite direction so that camshaft does not move or put any pressure on that back camshaft alignment tool. Like I said, workshop manual does not want that tool in there. I go ahead and leave it in there. And we're going to tighten up the exhaust one. It's 
So those are tight. We want to make sure our tools come in and out nice and freely. Slide in and out, slip in and out. Those look great. So now our camshafts are locked in, tightened up, and aligned. Now we want to put the VCT unit caps on. These are 142 inch pounds. I think they're a little bit on the light side when I tighten them up. So I go 142 and I give them a little extra oomph. You'll see here. Just doesn't feel like a lot to get the 142 inch pounds anyway. It's like nothing there. There's that little extra. <laughs> and then we want to make sure our crankshafts on that stop which it is, I just use some pliers. So everything up top is tight and lined up. Now we're installing the vibration damper alignment tool 303-1550 and this has got a little tang that sticks out that lines with this little notch in our, in our uh, vibration damper and that's like a trigger wheel so that's got to be lined up perfectly or you'll set all sorts of codes and it'll run like crap and there's a little bit of slop in it I like to find the middle ground on that slop I'm going to tighten the tool up there and now for a new crankshaft bolt I put a little bit of grease on it. I think it got some OMC triple guard grease for marine. Just on the top portion of it where it hits the washer and then some on the threads. I want a nice torque on this bolt. These things are tight. So everything's in and lined up and the crankshaft's up against the stop. So I use a chain wrench. It leaves a little mark on the sprocket but it doesn't hurt anything. I've got a strap wrench but it just doesn't work near as good as this chain wrench. The first step on this, it's a four step process on the crankshaft pulley bolt. We want to go first step to 74 foot pounds. You can see here I'm trying to find that middle ground on that slop. And we'll go to 74 foot-pounds right here. The next step is 90 degrees. So I'm using my paint pen again, marking it at 12 o'clock. I'm just going to eyeball it over to 90 degrees. Putting some safety glasses on here just, just for the... because... In case my ratchet explodes, I guess. And I'm applying equal force back just so all the force isn't on that crankshaft stop, that little pin. We're going to go 90 here. But I'm not allowing that crankshaft to spin back backwards counterclockwise. There's 90, and then you're supposed to wait two seconds, and then go another 15 degrees. There we go. Kind of a weird torque sequence. And we're going to pull out that um, 303-1550 vibration damper alignment tool. We are all lined up and tightened up. Next thing is to pull that crankshaft locking tool out, the 303-748. And this thing is set up. You can, it's ready for reassembly. Put everything back together. Clear the codes. Fire it up. 
the tools go in nice and easy they're not bound up there you go that's how you set it up appreciate it thanks for watching see you in the next video